TLO was popping. We are on kick, K I C K dot com. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, if we do go live on kick and you happen to miss it on kick, this is where the highlights will be this channel right here. Um, also, we got merch. I am wearing it. If you did order merch, it's being sent out soon or it's already sent out. So salute to y'all for purchasing. I appreciate it. And don't forget, we do got the Patreon. Right after this video and the uploads, I'm going to be uploading on Patreon today as well, man. That's where we watch things we can't watch on YouTube. Anywho. The link to all of that is down below in the description. It's a link down there called Link Tree. Click it. Boom. This is the British fugitive who evaded police for seven years, though. Let's get into it. <coughs> like, did he evade them in British? Britain? I mean, in the UK? When a crime takes place, not yeah, everyone he? involved always has the stomach to face the justice system. Some suspects flee the country becoming internationally wanted fugitives living secret lives in remote hideouts all across the planet. This was the case for young secret Loki, this is how I want my setup to be soon. W setup, I mean it's for something else, but but mine would have kick like up here and all my reaction <laughs> lives in remote hideouts all across the planet. Good this was the case for young David Ungi, a Liverpool resident who stood accused of participating Gotta be a scouser. Salute to all my fellow scousers. Painting in the murder of 18-year-old Vincent Waddington. R.I.P. He evaded police capture for seven whole years, and his recent trial has become the talk of the town in all of Liverpool. Stick around to find out the jury's verdict. It might not be what you think. You're watching OCG TV. Liverpool as a city is sadly no stranger to periods of intense violent crime. In the mid 20th century, the bustling docks served as the perfect avenue for the import of illegal narcotics. Liverpool gained a reputation for being a central transport hub for the drug trade, and even earned the nickname Smack City. Similar to how the Amsterdam, Rotterdam and Antwerp docks are used by organized crime syndicates to transport contraband. Where there's smoke, there's fire. In this case, illegal drugs are the smoke, and violence is the fire. The city became racked by turbulent gang disputes. OCG TV, this is a well put together little document here. You, okay, let me go ahead and sub up. Let me hit the like button, I like what's going on. <laughs> Got W editing, I probably edited it myself. I'm one of the best on the platform. So for cargo and territory. To Liverpool's credit, the city undertook a massive decriminalisation project in the 90s, and today the city's crime rate is equal to the national average, markedly low for an urban centre. One of the infamous crimes that shook the nation involved someone heavily linked to the killing of Vincent Waddington, David Ungi's father, David Ungi Sr. David Ungi Sr. has been involved in a dispute with local hitman Johnny Phillips. The two arranged a bare knuckles fight to settle the argument, which Ungi won. But Phillips claimed Ungi cheated. From that day forward, Ungi had to watch over his shoulder for signs of hitmen. At the age of 36, when his son was only around three, Ungi was shot and killed while driving on Dingle Street. Organized crime was so rampant that some. Wait, how would you have cheated in a bare knuckle fight? Like, how? wow even worried his enemies could strike within the emergency room he'd been taken to. The murder sparked massive rounds of protest in Liverpool, drawing crowds of 600 people who the riot police had to control. After two months of violence, the anger finally subsided. Nobody knows for sure who was behind the killing, and the culprit is still presumably at large today. This was the world David Ungi Jr. was born into. One of violence, death, and crime. The people he grew up around and came to befriend were born into this same community of crime. On the evening of the 14th of July 2015, 
Ongi was, according to prosecutors, riding along in a car with two friends on Banks Lane in Garston, a district of Liverpool. One was Ryan Bate, a convicted heroin dealer and car thief. The other, Luke Kendrick, had racked up a long list of offences on his criminal record dating back to when he was just 12 years old. He'd just been released from prison after serving a sentence for a case of racially aggravated assault. By all accounts, Kendrick was a known problem to the police. His mouth often got him into more racially. That's L. Kendrick. More trouble than he bargained for. Kendrick was the driver of the vehicle, an Audi A3, at around 8:45 p.m. He struck a motorcycle carrying two people. The passenger, 18-year-old Vincent Waddington, hit the ground. When he stood back up, one of the three young men took out a 12-gauge shotgun and fired a slug straight into Waddington's chest. The teenager reeled from the shot, managed to walk a few paces away, then collapsed to the ground. But wait, why did they why did they do that? They hit him off the bike. He got up, he was cool. And they maybe because he had all they had all them weapons in the car and things of that nature. They didn't want to have to deal with no police. That was dumb now. Round and died. 21-year-old Francis Humphreys, the driver of the motorcycle, was injured but survived. Parts of the motorcycle had gotten tangled around the car's wheels, so Bate, Kendrick and Ungi allegedly fled the scene on foot. The incident shocked the residents of Liverpool, and many feared that another wave of brutal organised crime could be looming just over the horizon. Police found Kendrick and Bate soon after the murder. They were both found guilty and sentenced to life sentences in prison. Ungi, on the other hand, remained at large. The 24-year-old was put at the top of the UK police's most wanted fugitives. No one could find him for seven years. It was as if David Ungi had vanished into thin air. Well, I was trying, so there's... Was trying to stay free, what do you mean? Call it vanishes, you know what I'm saying? What's that? May 5th, 22. This is last year. Fifth of May, 2022, a young British man signed up for a gym in the Costa del Sol, a famous holiday destination located on the southern Spanish Mediterranean coast. This by wasn't ben this is by Benidorm. <laughs> Don't tell me this by exactly anything out of the ordinary. British men often flock to Spain for their spring or summer holidays, and this was far from uncommon to see some take up permanent residence in the sunny region. What did stand out was that this young gym goer had the exact appearance and name of a British fugitive wanted for the murder of 18-year-old Vincent Waddington. When police discovered his location, they immediately dispatched agents to arrest Ungi and raid his residence. After seven long years of hell, Waddington's family would finally know the truth of what happened to Vincent and could see appropriate justice met out. During his stay in Spain, Ungi had been living a secretive life in Coin, a town in... It wasn't that secretive. He was still using his regular name and everything. Malaga. He shared an apartment with three other compatriots. When the police uncovered his possessions, they found 33 pounds of cocaine, 42 pounds of hashish, and a small quantity of cannabis. Did they just say 32 pounds of... Cocaine. They're like... 32 legitimate pounds, like one, two, three, four, or 32 pounds, like $32 worth, like. Most notably, agents also found an unlicensed loaded gun stashed in Ungi's shoulder bag, which he took with him every time he left his residence, according to the investigators. Ungi might have believed someone other than the police was out to get him, so he carried a loaded firearm on his person at all times. In Mustard tips. L, L bullets. In case he needed to act in self-defense. The police. No, 32 pounds. Okay, wow. He was in Spain getting it done. He began the extradition process to return Ungi to the UK so he could stand trial for his involvement in the murder of Vincent Waddington. There was a concern for a time that the 31-year-old would have to serve jail time in Spain before standing trial in the UK, and Ungi even tried to contest the extradition outright, but Spanish authorities found no legitimate reason not to send the man back home. 
On the 7th of September 2022, Ongi was flown to the UK and awaited his trial before a jury for his involvement in the murder of Vincent Waddington. To make matters worse, the prosecution also brought charges against him for his participation in the Liverpool drug ring. Considering video footage of his friend Luke Kendrick bragging about the killing had been shown to the courts and dozens of pounds of illegal narcotics were found in his apartment, Ungi's future didn't look particularly bright. You're done. You're going to jail, buddy. David Ungi stood accused of partaking in the murder of Waddington. The prosecution believed Ungi played an active role in the killing but didn't truthfully know which of the three young men shot the victim. Somewhat related to the murder was the case of Vincent Waddington Sr., the victim's father, who faced charges of conspiring to run a £160,000 drug operation in Liverpool. When questioned, Vincent Waddington Sr. claimed that he was only in contact with the known criminals. So wait, when they hit him off the motorcycle, they hit him on purpose then because they knew who he was? Or was it that they hit him off the motorcycle and then noticed who he was afterwards and was like, oh, okay. in order to gain information on the whereabouts of his son's killers. He broke down in tears and said, After the 14th of July, the only thing I care about, apart from my family, is catching the people who done what they'd done to my son. The jury wasn't convinced. They found Waddington guilty, but the testimony confirms that emotions were still incredibly high, even seven years after the murder. Coupled with newspaper headlines calling Ungi the baby-faced assassin, it appeared the 31-year-old would be fighting an uphill battle to prove his innocence. Bungie's defense before the jury was very straightforward. He claimed that he was never actually in the car that struck Vincent Waddington and Francis Humphrey's motorcycle in the first place. Bungie said that he was at the gym at the time, so he couldn't have been involved with the murder. An eyewitness of the event described a six-foot man with a slim build exiting the back seats of the car. Ungi struck back at the witnesses questioning how it possibly could have been him, given that he's only five foot four inches tall. Right. Six foot, five foot four are not the same. They do not look the same. From far up close, nothing. The prosecution wouldn't give up so easily, however. They hit back and said that investigators discovered traces of Ungi's DNA on the water bottle in the rear passenger side of Kendrick's abandoned car. To onlookers, this might have been the evidence which finally saw Ungi put away for good. The defense claimed that his friend Ryan Bates must have picked up Ungi's bottle and placed it in the car. On the 19th of May 2023, the jury's decision was heard before the court. To most people's shock, the jury, comprised of five women and seven men, declared David Ungi not guilty after- That's not shocking. Honestly, from what I just heard, <laughs> It ain't shot. Five foot four and six foot one. All you got to do is bring up reasonable doubt. That in my mind, that created doubt. Five foot four and six foot, like, that's not the same. I'm six two. So I know what a, a five foot four person is nowhere near my height. Like, I'm almost a foot taller than a five foot. The over 16 hours of deliberation. Ungi and his family were naturally relieved, though the young man claims the treatment he received by the press was unwarranted and that he was treated as if he'd already been found guilty before even arriving home. It's not all sunshine and roses for Ungi, however. He must still continue serving his six-year sentence in Spain for illegal possession of narcotics and an unregistered firearm. Still, a six-year stint in prison is far preferable to a life sentence. We might never know who exactly pulled the trigger and killed Vincent Waddington. What we do know, however, is that in the eyes of the law, David Ungi was not the one who did it. His story shows how the emotional impact of a murder can run deep within a community seven years after the fact. The victim's family was still more than ready to see justice meted out. The UK judicial system found David Ungi not guilty. But what do you think? Do you believe his account of the events? Why do you think he left the UK for Spain? The only reason that I would think of any suspicion is because he left the UK for Spain. But maybe he just was spooked and he didn't want to be a part of it. I don't know, because they was looking for him. I don't know. But six foot and five foot four, two different things in my mind. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. Let me know what you think, man. I'm gone.